For this project, I will be using Visual Studio Code as usual, and I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see better. And as you can see, I've already created a very simple index.html page. And in this index.html page, I've included my style sheet, which is under the folder CSS, styles.css. And then I've included the font that we'll be using for this project. The font that we'll be using for this project, you can find under font.adobe.com. And the font is called Agency FB. To include this font to your project, you can go to Add to a Project, give your project a new name, and then select Regular and Bold and any other font weights that you might want to use. Once you do this, the Create button will be available. Once you uh, give it a name, uh, make sure you create a new project, and then that will give you similar link to the one I have inside the head of my HTML page. Paste your link here and then your font should be ready to use. So to test this, what I will do is I will create an H1 with something like Apex Legends. Let's save this and also just to let you know, for this project I'm using SCSS which is processed to CSS and that's why I've included the styles.css and then I am using the plugin lifesize compiler as always which watches for any SCSS changes to compile it to CSS and then last but not least I'm using the um, live server so I don't have to refresh every time I make a change on the page every time I press save so let's save this go to the page and see what's going on so we get in the Apex Legends, but as you can see, the font doesn't work yet. So let's deal with that. And the first thing, as always, that we need to do is reset the margin on the body. So let's do body margin zero. And then let's add the font, font family. And the font is called agency uh, FB. And then that would be sans serif. Let's save this, go back to a page. And as you can see, the font is now working, coming from Adobe Fonts. And I will put the description uh, in the description below, by the way. Uh, so it saves you time searching for it. And then now the next thing I've done is I've actually went to the game to Apex Legends. Basically, I've taken a screenshots from the game inside the game so we can see so we can use it kind of as a template to design the buttons and also if we zoom in um, I've taken different states of the buttons so this is uh, the active state of this button and then this is the hover over uh, the hover state of the active button and then we've got the normal buttons in here and this is the normal state of the ones that are not currently selected. And this is the hover state of this button. So we're gonna have to do all of them. And I also have saved this image so we can use it as a blueprint to design all buttons. So let's go back to a project and minimize this. And let's add our blueprint. So what I will do is I will add a I'll add our blueprint as a background image and the URL will be for me will be images and then I've called it blueprint.jpg. Okay, let's save this and this is the uh, background that we get and I'm not going to do anything else with it. I'm just going to position the button close to this uh, when we create the button. So we can see whether it matches uh, the design and so on. So let's do that next. Let's go back to the project. Let's go back to the index.html. Let's remove the H1 because we won't need it. And to start with, let's start with a very simple link with maybe let's give it a class name of menu link. And the, the href will be empty for now because we are not actually building a full project out of it. Let's keep it empty. We don't want it to lead anywhere uh, for this tutorial. And then let's um, add something like play. 
as you can see the the first button is called play so let's do play legends loadout uh, battle pass and store we'll add those ones later so first of all let's focus on the ones that are not active and do not have a uh, hover state on top of them let's focus on those ones and then we'll focus on the one that is active so let's go back to styles.scss and what I can do is actually I can move my Visual Studio code. The class name that I gave the link is called menu link. So let's go in here and create menu link. And and I don't know if you are able to see, but the link as default is always blue and is underlined. So we'll have to change this, of course. Uh, but first of all, let's give our link a height, uh, a width, a height, and a background color so we can see it a little bit better. So first of all, to give a link a width and a height, we need to make sure that this is a block element. And to do this, uh, to convert it to a block element, we need to display it as block or inline block. So display. In this case, let's add it as inline block because we will be having a few buttons that will be next to each other. And of course, you can use flexbox and so on, but this will do the job for now. And then the next bit I want to do is let's add a background color of red and then let's give it a width. And I know that the width of this uh, is going to be 199 pixels and I know the height that the height will be 120 pixels so if you say this you will see that the height is very similar to this we don't have to have it exact but we'll try to make it as close as possible to this the next thing that we might want to do is remove the text decoration so we don't want the underline and also we want the link to be color white um, three F's and then let's make the font size a little bit bigger and I believe font size I believe that the font size will be roughly 27 pixels something similar to this but we also want to change the weight to be font weight to be around 700 so that looks similar of course the font is not exactly the same uh, I couldn't find exactly the same font but this one looks very similar so that would do the job also I think the spacing between can be maybe fixed a little bit so let's do that quickly so we can do that by letter spacing and let's put one pixel that spaces out the letters a little bit more uh, but the next thing that we want to make sure is that this text is always in the middle of the box and we can do this by text align center Okay, so far so good. By the way, this button uh, won't be red. Uh, we are, as I said before, we're first of all we are focusing on the normal buttons, and then we'll focus on the active buttons. First of all, we need to create a gradient to work something similar to this. And what I've done, um, what I did, okay, what we can do is select a few colors. Maybe we can select uh, the color from here with Photoshop or whatever tool you're using and maybe we can uh, select another one from here and see what the difference is I don't think there is a big difference I think it's a very small difference so but as you can see I think we do have some sort of a gradient so let's uh, let's see if we can mimic it as as close as possible and the RGB for this is 46 46 46 which makes it easy for us and to save you some time you can actually use uh, gradient generator and I really like this one it's uh, cssgradient.io or you can uh, do it manually inside CSS it's actually fairly simple but let me show you how I did the gradient to start with and as I said the let me open this full screen first of all as I said the color that we will be using is uh, 46 46 46 and 46 I can actually copy this and paste it because we're gonna need uh, two or three potentially I think this is good also on the first one I want to make sure that the alpha is set somewhere around 80 so this gives the background color a little bit of opacity which we can always change later 
and I want to make sure that we have this one around, I don't know, let's say 71. And let's make sure that this is also set to 80. And if it doesn't work, we'll change it as I said. And we need one more and to add one more, you can just uh, click on this one and click around here and that should add another one. And for the last one, I'm thinking that we put this as alpha to zero, so the opacity is so it's fully opaque. The next thing we want to make sure is that this is set to 180, so the gradient starts from the top and goes to the bottom. So let's copy this uh, generated gradient uh, to our project. Uh, in here so it would go something like this I hope this is uh, good for you to see let's save it and let's move the browser back to the right side of the screen so as you can see we have this very opaque brown color which is perfect um, it looks similar but uh, we'll see later on the next thing that we need to do is obviously we need to make this uh, skew effect and css makes this super easy so to do this we can actually use the transform property and then we can do skew x now skew x is going to be <clears throat> excuse me, skew x is going to be roughly 45 degrees and as you can see the degrees are actually very similar and let me position this very close to the other button so just for the example we are going to remove this later on but, but just for the example let's position this as I don't know let's say absolute and move this I don't know, 100 pixels let's see if it moves okay so that's perfect 200 pixels Okay, as you can see, the skew is perfect, and if I was to move it, I don't know, let's see, 400. Uh, the, as you can see, the color is very similar, but we can further adjust it and so on. So let me move this to 160. Okay, so I've moved the next to uh, the red one, which is fine. And the next thing that we probably want to do is, you're probably wondering, but how do we fix the playtext to be straight? And to do this, we are actually going to have to add another element inside the link. And let's add a span. Wrap the play uh, button with span. And then we're going to style the span inside here. But before I do that, I wanted to I uh, mentioned that we need to do the browser prefixes for uh, transform. Uh, it's important to make sure that transform uh, the transform works on all browsers. And for example, you will probably have, um, let's add them super quickly. You'll probably have WebKit uh, transform. And let me copy this. So you have WebKit transform. Uh, we'll have uh, Mozilla transform which is Firefox will have uh, Microsoft oh, Microsoft transform and what else do we have uh, maybe Oprah transform and so on this should now work on all browsers and then we can copy this and and paste it inside the span and the trick here is that we review re we reverse the skew and to do this we're gonna have to do minus 45 degrees let's save this and as you can see there is no difference and this is because again span is not a block element and to do this we're gonna have to make sure that we display the span as something like inline block or block so let's uh, display the span as block and see what happens. As you can see, we have play in the middle and it's now looking normal and the way it should. Obviously, we need to position it to be uh, similar to this one. And to do this, uh, we can just do, uh, we, we have to make sure that this is positioned relative uh, inside the link. So position relative. And then we can just do top 33 pixels. 
and as you can see this is similarly uh, the gap is very similar to the original apex legend button so far so good the next bit that i want to build is the uh the line that you see here and this will be fairly easy to do we can actually do this with a pseudo element and in um, inside the menu link we can actually do ampersand after and for this of course because it's a pseudo element we'll have to add a content and the content will be empty and then we'll have to make sure that this pseudo element is positioned relative to the link uh, so we can position it and let's give it um, a height of 10 pixels and let's make sure that the uh, pseudo element is full width so it takes the full width of the button so width 100% uh, percent will be perfect and then of course you, you're not seeing it yet because we need to give it a color so let's say background color and the background color would be 80 80 80 and the way um, the way I've taken this is um, if you go back to the screenshot I've just inspected um, what color this is and as you can see this is 80 80 80 and let's go back and see what's going on uh, let's save this and see what we have as you can see this is not uh, working as well and we are actually gonna have to make sure that this is positioned as display block and oh excuse me so let's move the display block at at the top here and as you can see um, this is now uh, coming up perfectly fine and of course we need to position it after the uh, position relative let's position it from the top we can position it oh from the top we can position a 42 pixels and you can position it from the bottom as well it doesn't really matter in this case and let's take uh, get rid of this space okay as you can see this is looking fairly similar now to the original buttons uh, fairly happy with this maybe the uh, the actual text let's have a look the actual text is a little bit gray so um, let's see on hover actually okay so the the text is always gray but the text on the active uh, button is white so let's make sure that we select the gray color from here okay and let's minimize this and basically we can add the color in here instead of fff we can have it b0 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 save this and this should now look very similar to the original and now the next bit that i want to focus on is the hover effect on this so this is how the hover will look basically all we have to do is change the um the gradient color a little bit and i think oh and also um, as you can see this line is also changing the color and I believe that this is white yep so let's change the gradient color and let's change this to white on hover so that should be fairly simple um, inside the menu link because we're using a CSS we can literally um, maybe after the pseudo element here we can literally do a hover effect so ampersand hover and for the hover we'll need to uh, change the background color and for this let's see what um, background color uh, what should we use okay for this we can use something like uh, 69 maybe and maybe we can make this more opaque so 69 so basically you can either go back to the gradient website or you can recreate 
uh, you can copy this and uh, recreate one yourself and it's actually fairly easy to do it to be honest so let's copy this quickly and let's recreate it so for the full back background color let's see uh, let's say 69 and then 69 and then 69 perfect number <laughs> and uh, and now for the gradient we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have it 180 degrees then we can have it uh, let's have a look so we're gonna have to copy this a few times um, and I'm sure there is a shortcut for this okay it doesn't matter uh, let's do 69 and then just copy this everywhere could have copied all of that but I've committed now it's so good and let's say that the first one is uh, 0.8% um, opacity then the one which is at 71 is again let's say 8 I think that should do the job and then uh, we'll leave the one uh, at the bottom at 100 let's save this and see whether the hover works so this looks fairly similar to the one here obviously we can spend more time and get it absolutely perfect if you wanted to but I think this works quite well so far um, you can't even tell the difference that much so now we need to focus on the active button for the active button we have some we're gonna have to do something very similar where the uh, the color changes slightly on this line and also the gradient changes ever so slightly and let's have a look at how we can do that so first of all let's go back to index.html and make sure we copy this button and create uh, a copy of it here uh, just above and in fact uh, let's put the first one the active one will be play and the second one will be called legends so let's rename this to legends legends save this and now what I want to do is um, on your website most likely the way to make the active work uh, most likely we're gonna have to add an active class so let's add an active class here and we will just style the active class to make sure that uh, our button looks active and of course the buttons are now uh, on top of each other because they're positioned absolute and we're gonna have to get rid of that now because uh, here we go left and absolute will get rid of save and as you can see we have the play button and the uh, normal button here perfect so let's now style the active button and we actually want to make sure that the active button is kind of linked with the menu button so where uh, when we have menu link and active class together then we want to style uh, let's go down and do that so we have uh, menu uh, link and we also have active and that means uh, when those two classes are together like in here uh, we can uh, do uh, some specific styles so the first thing of course we need to change the background color to red and we need to change this line to red as well uh, let me see what it is okay I'll copy this um, so okay the first thing let's do is uh, background and I already know that the background RGB would for this one will be 163 163 uh, just to save you time and it would be six and it would be six but of course you can inspect this with Photoshop and you'll get very similar color and then the gradient uh, let's do background and that gradient will be a linear gla gradient again and that would be 180 degrees and then we need RGBA and in fact I'm gonna do it um, in here so you can see a little bit better 
and the RGBA will be 163, um, then 6, then 6, then 0, and then 0 0.6 for the opacity, and then this will be the starting point of the gradient. Then we need another one which will be exactly the same, but this one will be around the 71%. Uh, I don't know why I have a 71, it could have been 70. And then the uh, next one will be the 100. And also we need to make sure that uh, the middle one is set to 1. And the last one is set to zero i believe and okay we have a problem okay we actually yeah we don't need this uh too much javascript i think so let's save this okay i've uh i've added too many numbers and that's why so not um okay so that should uh and we don't have the comma at the end and that should fix our problem. Basically, we have 0 0.6 opacity, then 1, then 0. And if you inspect the uh, button closely, you will see that it's very opaque to start with, then it goes to very red, and then it goes down to 0 opacity. And the color of this needs to be changed as well. So let's do that now. But this is looking very similar now uh, to the one that we have there. Maybe. Uh, we can mess with the opacity a little bit more but let's add the line first and we'll see and as you know we added the line uh, with a pseudo element um, in here under the menu link so we can do exactly the same thing but instead what we have to do is actually change the background color so inside here we can target the pseudo element after and let's just change the background color to be background. Uh, what's color? See, to type background color, and the background color would be um, would be ff four e one d, and that looks. I think that looks very similar. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's, that's exactly uh, the same color, so we are fine. And now we obviously need to do the hover state of the active button. And to do this, we can initially do and hover. And for the hover, uh, the gradient will be ever so slightly different. Um, I've already looked at the color. It's a little bit more bright, so I kind of uh, guessed it, to be honest. But uh, I think the color is going to be, if you're following along, the color is 189 and 10 and then 10. And then I can copy this for the gradient, but just to save you time, I've already created that. So let me copy and paste it and I will just align it like this so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so the gradient is the gradient is almost identical as this one. It goes from zero opac uh, zero point six opacity to one to zero, and the the color is ever so slightly brighter. And also, we want to make sure that uh, we have okay. Something is going wrong. Let's have a look. I didn't save. That's why. So we had the background color there. And also we want to make sure that when we hover over the the literal line uh, below changes as well. And the color for this line is going to be a little bit brighter. It's, it's like this orangey color, FF732E, if you're following along. And to do this, we're going to have to do, inside the hover, we're going to have to do after. And for the after, what we have to do is background color and set the background color to this orangey FF732E color. So save this. And if we hover over, you will see that we have uh, this one as active and as hovered. That's why it looks very similar to this. Almost identical, but the only, um, the only difference I can see is the text color. 
So we can change this by giving the text color um, color of white. And now it looks super similar to the original one by Apex Legends. Now that we have both of the buttons uh, created, I can actually go ahead and replicate, uh, let's replicate the rest. So we have Legends, Loadout, Battle Pass and Store. Let's super quickly create them and I'm gonna open this. So what I can do, I'm, I'm only going to replicate the ones that are not active. So this one and in Visual Studio Code, there is a handy shortcut for this Alt and Shift and then just press the down arrow one, uh, two, three, four. And so we have legends loadout. Then we have the battle pass. I don't know if battle pass is one word. Uh, I think it's two words. And then we have the, in fact, we have too many buttons. So let's remove one. Um, let's save this, go back to the browser and have a look. And at the moment you can actually see them because of the image below. So let's remove the image quickly and see what we have so far. So, if you go, if you scroll to the top and remove the background image, save this, go back to the browser. Oh, and it this is super bright now. Uh, but you can see that we have all the buttons working quite nice. And uh, as you can see, as you can see, the link is actually working when you hover over them. So there isn't a conflict, a conflict bef between them. Um, as you can see, the link ends right here on the edge. The, the arrow should change, as you can see, uh, and that's absolutely perfect. Now that we have our menu created, uh, the next bit would be to make this look a little bit more like the actual page in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the logo and I'm going to add uh, the navigation bar in the middle of the page and I'm also going to add this, uh, those icons, but instead of me wasting time of the, on the icons, I've actually just cut this from the image and I'm just going to use this instead. There is no point of me redoing uh, the icons and the text. Let's begin by creating the top navigation. And also uh, for those of you um, that noticed, there is a very there is a gradient in here that we have to watch out for uh, which we can create in a little bit let's uh, focus on creating the navigation now and if you go back to our index.html file what i will do is i'm gonna i'm going to wrap everything into um, the header html5 element like this And inside the header, we'll have three elements. The first one will be a div with something like a class of logo, which will hold, uh, which will hold our logo, of course. And then I will add an image in a second. Then we're gonna have uh, our navigation, so our links can be wrapped into uh, this nav tag. And of course, you can add it as a URL with a list. But let's not overcomplicate it now. I think this should do the job. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add those icons um, here on the right side of the screen. So let's create for that. Let's create another div with the class. I don't know what they are. So let's say side icons. I'm sure that you can think of a better name if you are a gamer and you know what they mean. And I've actually saved cropped image and saved it into my images. So I'm just going to include this straight away. So images, uh, source, and the source for me will be images and the, I call the icons JPEG. Yes, it's not transparent, but it doesn't really matter at the moment. And the old, let's call it icons. Okay, let's save this and see what we have. And for this, actually, let's add logo. Okay, 
So we have the logo, we have all navigation, and we have the icons. And before we actually continue, let me create the logo super quickly. I promise I won't take too much time. So what I can do in Photoshop, I'm going to crop this out, of course. Let's, let's upgrade the logo. And right click. I need to be on this layer, I think. Right click, fill. Uh, let's try the content aware that almost worked and when this doesn't work let's pick a brush choose a color it's very similar nobody can tell perfect absolutely nobody can tell what i've done there is fine let me now go ahead and uh, improve the logo of apex legends of course and paste this this is a extra bonus oh yeah okay the, the logo looks for some reason the logo of apex legends looks so much better right now i hope that this is center aligned i don't know it looks almost center aligned but that should do the job and let's change the this to screen oh, that looks so much better perfect so let's save this super quickly i'm gonna merge those two layers and just literally crop this like that uh, and of course you can use svg um, and in fact it might be better if you use svg but i'm going to crop this mm, new project save and I'm going to save it images and I'm going to save this as a PNG and I'll just call it Apex logo. Okay. Now that we have our logo created, we have everything that we need. So let's include the logo. And the logo will be again in the images and now Apex logo and the old tag will be apex legends yeah let's save this go back to the browser and as you can see we have the logo the menu and the icons um, to save us a lot of time what we can do now is use flex to display the element to center them and these um, make sure they're displayed appropriately just like on the layout uh, here okay let's do that so we can target the header in our CSS right uh, in here at the top header and for the header let's make sure that the header is displayed as flex and then all we have to do is make sure that the content is justified uh, so justify content space between and we can do space around and space between and I can show you the differences and but let's have a look at how this works so as you can see this is already this was this was so easy to make uh, everything is the way it should be this is on the left side this is on the right side and this is perfectly in the middle just the way i actually want it and obviously if you look at the original we have some uh, space here some margin of uh, 48 pixels and we can do this in so many ways we can either have our menu with a max width and center aligned. Let me show you quickly. So for example, we can have a as max width of something like 1.8 to 8 pixels. And of course, we want to make sure that this is center aligned of the screen. And for do this, we can reset the, we can put the margin as zero auto. And as you can see, this is now in the middle. Uh, this is one of the tricks that we can do but uh, if you wanted to use uh, if you wanted to add this gradient which i will show you how to do as well um we'll probably have to have the navigation for it but anyways let me quickly show you how to do this gradient and you're probably wondering well brad how is this going to work because the the buttons actually taken a lot more width and if we put a gradient, uh, then it's going to be uh, 
right to the bottom and you are correct we are, you're kind of correct if uh, this is what you were thinking and let me show you so the the background color for this will be rgb rgb and the red will be 44 the green will be 39 and the blue will be 46 okay oh damn okay save this and as you can see uh, the gradient is actually taking the full width which is normal because the buttons uh, uh, the buttons uh, have a big uh, have a height number and that's why it's taking the full height of the buttons so a very easy way to do this without adding uh, images with the uh, background images is to use a gradient and as you re if you remember let's uh, let me close this if you remember this um, we had the second gradient up to 71 percent we can actually use this for advantage to do the background gradient in here and to do this uh, the gradient color will be exactly the same so i've already created it to save us some time but let me show you so if i pay this paste this we have the 180 degrees then the background color is exactly the same as this one but i have the opacity set to 0 0.5 just to like match it i think the background uh, image here is quite dark so like i think that would work quite nicely and then obviously it becomes quite darker as it goes down and then that's why i've got um yeah that's why i've got this as uh, 0 0.8 and this as zero uh, let's see how this looks like yeah th this is uh, very similar it kind of works and the reason it works is because um, we have uh, this gradient set to 60 and let me show you so if i was to set this to 40 the gradient will cut off around here so because we have those two set at 60 so if i was to set this one at 40 as well the gradient will stop here and the next one is uh, has opacity of zero so the next one will start from here and and at the bottom here to take 100 percent so that's all good that's perfect and let's leave it at 60 i just calculated it super quickly oh okay so this is working quite well but of course now the ohera is cutting off in here and if i'm completely honest i don't know if i want this background but i can uh, but there's so many ways of fixing it we can remove the uh, max width and we can have a wrapper inside the header or we can simply do margin uh, margin left to be 48 pixels and margin uh, right to be 48 pixels and you can do this the short way as well we can remove the margin now and as you can see oh actually sorry this needs to be padding instead and as you can see now uh, the back the gradient is full width we have the spacing just like on the original layout in here and everything is looking good one thing that I noticed is that this needs to be uh, moved at the bottom and to do this uh, flex makes it super easy and what I can do inside the header as we're here we can target the side icons right here and all we have to do is make sure that they are align self to the center maybe let's have a look at this this actually works quite well uh the the line is like ever so slightly off which is annoying but i was going to take that line off anyway otherwise i have to change the width uh, a little bit and so on i don't know if i like it with the line or without the line i can't uh, the other thing i can do is add some margin to this um, maybe like let's see whether this works 
yeah i think this worked well, well actually so this will work let's continue with it to finish off this layout and make it look awesome we can add a background image which i've already i went to the apex legends website and i kindly uh, and i borrowed one from there so the url will be um, images and bg image as a background image save this and i think i need to dust do i probably let's save this and as you can see this is looking so much better now again this is why i wasn't so sure about this uh, background color let's have a look how it looks without it uh yeah i prefer this for now i think and we can remove the margin uh, from this as well it doesn't really matter so much and i think this is looking good okay let's uh let's leave the margin back so it's perfectly aligned with everything else so this is looking fairly good the active button looks uh, quite nice and the uh, normal buttons look just like in the game now this image is not so important um, and that's why it's not responsive but of course you can make a background uh, the background image to cover and make it responsive and so on but i'm not going to do this and the bonus of this video is animating the layout with gsap so to do this let's go back to our project and obviously we're gonna have to include gsap and for this let's go to uh, okay let's go now to a website called cdnjs.com slash libraries and if we put slash gsap you'll see that uh, we have a list of uh, links that we can use for gsap and the one that i need is actually this one here at the bottom it's the I think it's the latest version of uh, GSAP, the green socket animation 3.2.5. And I'm going to copy the minified version, copy this, and let's include this in our project. And I'm going to include this uh, right here at the bottom. So let's do link and let's choose actually, let's do script and then let's do source. And the source will be the link that we just copied. And then we can actually write our JavaScript in here just to make things a little bit easier instead of creating another file. So let's create a script in here, tag and save this. So now that we have the GSAP CDN included, we can actually start doing some simple animations. GSAP makes um, animations fairly easy to do. I will show you how to use the timeline and the the idea here is that we have the logo animated first and then each individual button animated after that, staggering after each other, and then we can animate the icons at the end. And let me show you how easy this is to do. And, and let's use the timeline for this, the, the GSAP timeline. Let's go back. And first of all, to create a timeline, we can do a variable. Uh, you can have it as a let or var or whatever and uh, let's call or variable name something like uh, tl it stands for timeline and uh, this is widely used by the gsap community so this is what it means timeline and then we have to do create we have to do gsap dot timeline and then in here we can add all sorts of options uh, later um, but we probably won't need this to be honest uh, let's just let's just create a timeline for now and we probably let's yeah in fact we won't need this anymore uh, we won't need this so we're basically creating a timeline and to use the timeline we can simply copy the variable name tl and we can just do two so inside the two is where we're going to be having uh, the options first of all we need to target an element and for example, the first element that I want to target is the logo. So the logo is a class element, so we have to do the dot logo. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that the logo comes um, from the top of the page and slides down. And I'm going to do the same for the rest. So nothing too fancy. And the, to do this, we need to change the Y position of the logo. 
and the y position will be zero because this is the default position of the, the, the logo right now. Right now, the logo is positioned at zero, y, and x. And then let's, just to show you, let's set a uh, duration. And duration can be set to one, you can make it faster, but put in zero point something. But one will be perfect for this example, I think. And let's close this. Now, the problem with this is that uh, the logo is already set at zero. And if I save this, and if I refresh, nothing is going to happen. So we need to make sure that the logo is actually offset uh, from the page. And to do this, we can we have to go back to styles. And inside the header, let's add another style logo. And we have to do transform. And the transform that we're going to do is transform Y. And the transform Y, all we have to make sure is that the logo is hidden, is off the page. So all logo is roughly 150 pixels, I, I would assume. So in this case, to be safe, let's go with 200 pixels and save this. If I refresh now, you will see that the logo is sliding from the top nicely. That's really cool. And let me just quickly remove this, uh, comment it, just to see where the logo is. So as you can see, the logo is now hidden, which is perfect. And then when I enable the animation, it comes down nicely. So that's perfect. And also don't forget that we transform, we have to do the browser prefixes just like I've done here. And if you're good, um, if you're used to SCSS, you can do a mixing to help you out with this so you don't have to rewrite this all the time. But other than that, you can literally just copy and paste super quickly uh, just to ensure that this works on all browsers. So that's perfect. As you can see, every time I refresh, the logo slides nicely. And now we need to make sure that the um, rest of the elements do the same. But I want to make sure that um, those elements come animated one by one. And you could copy and paste the code that we just done, but there is an easier way. Uh, and let me show you how. So, so we need to make sure that so this is the element that we need to target, the menu link. To be honest, we can actually target the nav and every single link inside it as well. So let me show you. So again, we're gonna have to use the timeline variable and then we're gonna have to use two and then we're gonna have to do uh, select the, the element that we want to animate and I want to basically animate every single link element inside the nav and we can actually do something like this. So every single link inside the nav will be animated. And then all I want to do is do exactly the same thing as above. I'm going to change the Y position to be zero. And I want to make sure the duration is roughly around one second. And let's save this and see what's happened. Okay, let's refresh now. And as you can see, nothing is happening. And you probably guessed why it's because the A element are actually not uh, offset yet. So let's do that, go back to styles. And here we're gonna have a little problem. So the problem is that we are already um, transform, transforming the element and we're gonna have to ha um, add the translate Y in here. So it's not really a problem, but just make sure that you don't add another transform property uh, underneath here with the translate y just okay just don't do this don't do this uh, basically we need to make sure that the uh, the new one comes right after the skewx or before whatever but make sure that uh, you have it uh, in, the, in the same property we're gonna have to copy this again a few times. And I think 200 pixels should do the job. Um, excuse me. So let me copy this super quickly. And okay. Let me disable the animation just so we know. 
And as you can see, the menu is now hidden. Let's go back under this, save, go back to the browser. And we have a little problem. And the problem that we are having is if you inspect uh, the elements, the A's, is that uh, GSAP is actually translating uh, the 200 pixels to the left, which is not what we want. We actually want to only trans translate this, the Y position, up and down. And to do this, let me show you how we can fix it. So what we actually have to do is we actually, inside here, we're actually going to have to set an X position as well. And the X position will have to be set to zero. So let's do X zero, comma, and then leave the duration on. So let's save this and see what happens. OK. Now, this is working perfectly well. Everything is in the middle. But as you can see, the animation is not so good. The whole menu is coming uh, together. And to make sure that every single element is coming out separately, we can use the stagger. So we, the stagger property. And after the duration, we can literally just say stagger. And let's do stagger after every 0 0.2, um, that will be milliseconds. And if we save this, we should get this beautiful effect now that every single element is staggering after each other. Let's refresh again. That looks beautiful. And obviously you can speed it up and slow it down and whatever. Now, last but not least, we're gonna have to do this for the last element in here. And we can literally just copy the logo code. So we can copy this. And we all we have to do is make sure that we change the class name to be this one, the slide icons. And we don't have to change the X element here or anything like that, I believe. Let's give it a go. So let's save this. And again, this did not animate because we have not changed the Y position. And let's do that super quickly. So under styles.css, we can add it um, under header. And uh, actually, here it is, slide icons. So I can literally copy this uh, transform, translate y, property, minus 200 pixels, should do the job. Save, go, pad, go back to the browser, and see what happens. Perfect. So that looks really good. Everything is animated nicely. And the last thing I wanted to show you is, if we inspect this, um, I just wanted to show you how, uh, let me close it. I just want to show you how the flex works. So if I select the header, I think I'm using the wrong browser. Um, yes, this browser didn't have it, but basically we are in Firefox now. And let me inspect the elements and I want to show you how the flex works. If I click on, the, if I click on this uh, flex element, you will see how the elements are separate. Uh, this is because I've used the space between, but you can mess around with your layout and maybe do um, space around, um, and that gives, uh, this uh, gives each element space around, uh, as you can see, uh, space evenly as well works quite well. But I think uh, space between works quite well for my situation and so on uh, this is everything from this tutorial i hope that uh, you enjoyed it and you learned something new um, let me know if you want to see more tutorials like this um, i'm trying to create unique tutorials that uh, are not out there uh, something different something a little bit more fun so if you have any ideas let me know i love doing tutorials like this uh, please please subscribe to my channel um, and uh, that's everything from now. I will see you next time. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.